human rights, of course, is some basic rights that all people have. Man, woman, child, whichever caste, community, whether a man, uh, you, so what are these basic rights that we have always fought for? One is primary, the primary thing that everyone should have enough nutrition, that people should have enough to eat. These are all rights that are still a problem in our country. So what happens when women are pregnant? What happens immediately after they have a child and are breastfeeding? What about the child's nutrition? Why do so many infants die in India? So those are the basic rights. So, and then the right to health, which is very important, because more and more people are forced to go to a very expensive private care. So that is a right. The right to water. Women in our country still walk long distances for water and firewood. So that is another right. So we are talking about the basic rights first. Then the right to work. The right to work is, and then the right to get adequate pay. And this is particularly important for women because more and more they're being pushed into the informal sector. So they don't even have, uh, there are very few groups through whom to fight and speak up for them. So these are old fights. In addition to the basic rights, you've all, always had the right to be politically active, to say if you disagree, to protest, to say that we want lives free of violence and that we want a life where we can make choices. I think that is the most important thing. You can choose wh whether you want to study, who you want to marry, where you want to live, what you want to eat, choices. So why is it different now with this ongoing struggle that has always been there for human rights? Today, there are certain <coughs> aspects which have made human rights struggles a little different. What could these be? One, of course, the primary thing I would say is economic policy. So all the time we are hearing about how India is going to become this great power. But in the process, economic policies, globalization has meant that women are actually getting left out. A lot of people, all the people, this, this new uh, India shining is just upper caste, Hindu, preferably male. So we are leaving out women, we are leaving out minorities, the, um, uh, 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 the other caste, the lower caste and tribals. So all these people are left out. So that is where the economic rights of these people get violated. Then, of course, safety from violence. So let's see it like this. Pretend we are doctors and you have an acute problem. Sometimes you have a cough. So that can be caste violence. But you always have the chronic problem. So that cough is like a symptom of a bigger problem which is the divisions in society. What happens when we have a new ideology? I'm hoping our speakers today will talk about this. What is it like to fight for human rights, specifically for women, when we are living in an India which has a new division every day? It's not just men and women, it's not just different castes, it's not Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Sikh, it's not tribals versus the others. It is also becoming those who eat beef, those who don't. Those women who listen to their uh, husbands and sons and so on, those who don't. There are new divisions. So we're living in a time where the ideology of uh, Hindutva 
is actually not only telling people how to live and women how to making new rules it means that that old ongoing fight is being pushed backwards all the victories that many of you have participated in it's going back what is this ideology how is it changing human rights fights whether it is a fight against communalism whether it is a fight against um managements in trade unions whether it is a fight against the kind of human rights violations committed in what we are calling conflict zones places which are you know we pretend are in india but are not treated as if they are part of the nation the northeast kashmir what happens then and of course we are hoping that through the example of the northeast with one of our speakers bina lakshmi we can look at what happens to patriarchy when these kind of ideologies live so it's a double problem for women and here we will hopefully also discuss kashmir what has happened to women in kashmir not only with what the army is doing not only with what uh, you know different sorts of militants are doing but also what the fighters male fighters in kashmir are doing to their own women because new forms of islam are being practiced so i think that is what we want to look at and the final point i want to make is that i hope we will also talk about many people have talked about how alliances are important we can't talk about you know women's um, uh, human rights separately so we have to make alliances with others but on the question of alliances i think the biggest point we have to talk about is that the ideology of our times makes identity politics more important than mass politics but unless we say that we will come together and do mass politics and then we just keep doing identity politics that actually suits this ideology because they that's what they want to do they want to diminish people three things stand out one is that there are human rights violations every day i think uh, zuleika said it's like normal life so that's one thing the second thing is that human rights defenders who are women face specific problems they face problems at home with their families who feel that they might be endangered they might be disgraced so there is that and then they also face threats not only at home but from outside and one of the in addition to threats and uh, intimidation the easy thing seems to be to call them names either you're a shameless woman it used to be but now it is the easy things are terrorist naxalite uh a uh, muslim extremist whatever or as um, vina lakshmi said that you know you are from china maybe you know so to to actually make you no longer a part of this country and we all know how that is being used across the nation not just with women but these are the specific problems faced by um women who are human rights defenders uh I also want to say that we hear about you know uh, people like this that settled war then how uh, this government has gone after uh, someone who has fought for human rights but you also have for every person we know about from the papers and television there are many many women uh, who are working uh, in factories in villages in uh, uh, northeast in kashmir that we don't hear of so everyone is agreed that the only way to face the difficulties faced by women human rights defenders is for more and more people to come together individuals organizations young people older people and across regions across languages that is the only way